Euro Asian Bob strikes again. This time, it's really, really sweet. Let's take a look. Finally, I followed my own advice, and especially after the tragedy that we've seen on the Audi that's behind me, I said, you know what? Even for my customers, I'm tired of this stuff. I'm tired of this 100,000 mile German cars and they just turn into a pile of crap. I said, I'm going to get a Toyota. I'm done. I'm getting a Toyota. And I also decided to get a Toyota with some style. I don't know about class. It's not classy like a Range Rover or something. It's kind of sporty. It's kind of fun. And the styling on this, it really doesn't look like anything but the older FJ40 series Land Cruisers. It has some of the styling cues from that, but obviously it's much wider and much bulbous, I guess you could say. It doesn't look like a Jeep. Little kids see this thing, they don't say, look, it's a Jeep. They know something's different about that. That's not a Jeep. These things are heralded as being very, very reliable and very capable off-road, almost more so than a Jeep in a lot of ways. This is a 2010 Toyota FJ Cruiser with 180,000 miles on it. Me and Mrs. Wizard have always wanted to get an FJ Cruiser. We've seen them over the years and say, someday we'd like to have one of those. Those are really neat. That is a cool vehicle. Finally, after this catastrophe that Danielson's working on back here, I said, I'm, I'm getting a Toyota, and I did. I was scanning Facebook Marketplace, and I was coming up empty-handed, or they're either they're far away, or too many miles, or all kinds of different things, and I just thought, what am I doing? All I need to do is get a hold of EuroAsian Bob, and like, he can snap a finger and this appears, and he did. He found one on his website, he gave me actually a list of them, and he, we came across this one, it was in Houston. I said, let's pull the trigger, let's do it. And you guys know whenever I have him find me a vehicle, it's as is, no warranty. Whatever troubles or any issues it has, it's on me. That's how I get the best deal, and I can fix the rest myself. Now, he doesn't offer that deal to his other customers. That's because I bought literally 20 cars from him. I didn't even know that. He looked up the information. 20, over 20 cars, I think. Would I buy a Jeep Wrangler with 180,000 miles? No. How about a GMC Acadia? Absolutely not. A BMW X5? In your dreams, not happening. An Audi Q5? Not. Never. But a Toyota? Without question. This thing rides, runs, drives like a new vehicle. We'll get it on the lift here in a minute and see just how nice it is underneath. There are some small flaws here and there. Let's go ahead and take a look around it, but 180,000 miles, you can depend on a Toyota. It, they're that nice, guys. But like I said, you will pay 30 to 40% more for the vehicle. So you can see right off the bat, the front headlights are severely faded, almost unusably so, and they're cracked, so I'm not gonna bother cleaning them. The grill is like a Trail Team's black grill. I'm not sure if it was stock or not. I've got new headlights and a new grill ordered. It'll take care of that. There is some fading on this plastic piece that bolts to the hood. I'll just take that off and sand it and paint it myself. As you can see, there's already some small flaws for the miles that are on it. As you come around to this side, one thing you're not gonna find is severe rust, major dents, or anything seriously wrong with it. It has nice 16-inch wheels, it's not the 17s. And the tires are Goodyear Wrangler Ultra Trails. They're kind of noisy. I think They're very I'm, noisy. I've got some tires on order. I will do maybe a little bit of trail riding or something in it at some point, but I'm not going to do mud bogging in this thing. I don't need those types of tires. As we come around to the back, more iconic FJ styling. It has the really large, it's not the barn doors like a Suburban, it has one big side door. And there's water in there if you guys want some water. And it does have this glass that opens up. But the lenses and everything are clean and bright. Everything's in good shape. You can see it has towing package on it. And as you can see down this side, it is very, very clean, guys. And it has the stock roof rack on it or the whatever you want to call that. I will leave that there. It looks nice. It looks rugged. And it could actually come in handy at some point. 
Maybe this person had an angry girlfriend, boyfriend, or whoever significant other, and they were really pissed off at this person because they carved into the paint with a knife or something. Let me show you guys. B-I-T-C-H with underline three times. They were very serious about that accusation. Wow. Why they chose to put it there at the, by the wheel, it's kind of a weird place. I got some kind of a black compound already buffed it out and you can't even see it unless I shine a light on it and I'll probably leave it that way, but that's kind of strange. Oh, and the antenna base is disintegrated into a crumbling mess. I've got that on order as well. Let's go ahead and see what's going on under the hood. Look at that, the hood struts even hold the hood up. That's nice. This is the 1GRFE 4 liter V6. These are th bulletproof, absolutely bulletproof engines. As opposed to the Audi Q5 2.0 we just saw over there, which is trash. This is very, very nice. It's good power, not the best economy, but decent economy. This looks like a six pack of beers or something here. It's kind of weird, I don't know why they put that there, but there's a dirty little intake under there. And the nice thing is that even though the intake folds over to the right, we can still get to all the coils. In the 07 to 09 years of the FJ Cruiser, they had this same engine, but it was a little different, a little bit less power. It had single cam, variable valve timing, and a few other different features and things. In it. And it drove a little bit different. But this one is the updated version. It has dual variable valve timing, both cams, exhaust and intake. 20 more horsepower, and a little bit, tiny bit less torque but it is the sought after engine 2010 to 14, which they stopped making them in 2014. Everything under the hood is nice and clean, no leaks. It, without being told, just looking under the hood, you would think, okay, it's probably got 100,000 miles on it and it's almost to 200, that's crazy. So let's go ahead and hop into the quirky interior and let Mrs. Wizard show you guys around. It's really cool, it's really cool inside. Okay, ladies and gents, he's right, 183,931. Yes, it does have that many miles on it. And those lights that are shining on there, well, I do not have my seatbelt on, but I'm not going anywhere. But no, the check engine light, oil pressure light, battery, nope, just in auxiliary mode. They're not, they're just saying, hey, yes, the light bulb works. Before we move from here, one thing that's interesting is notice the gear selector, because this is not just an all-wheel drive. You actually have to put it into four-wheel drive. We'll see that shifter knob in a moment, but I love the little game chase over here to see which gear you're in. So uh, other than that, it's a very, very analog, just simple gauges on our display here. As we move up, well, that's a new item. Uh, let's push it. Oddest little hidey hole I think I've ever seen, but there you go. Not sure what you're going to put in there, but considering it is a hard plastic black dash with the sun shining just on it. So whatever you're putting in there, you're baking. But a uh, wizard tells me that would be where the airbag is. And you'll see something similar on the other side would be if we were on a right-hand drive vehicle. Because again, Toyota made these for all over the planet. One thing that's very interesting is that the steering wheel is way back here. The dash starts here. Our visor is way up here. And as far as I can reach, I can, can't hardly even reach the edge of that visor. So the windshield, far, far out of reach. Because the windshield is so far away, it is almost vertical. And it actually has three windshield wipers out there to help get the, well, since it's not blowing away, get the rain and whatnot off that very large windshield. But it is in good condition, no brakes, no stars. As we move over, we have some really interesting gauges in here. We can find out what direction we're traveling, what our temperatures are, and even uh, see what angle the car is I guess being thrown at, if we're off-road, um, pr pretty much on the highway, we're pretty level, especially here, shockingly, in Kansas. As we move over, there's that other spot where the airbag is on a left-hand drive. This would have been switched over to that weird little hidey hole if it was right-hand drive. As we go down, you'll see this is a very utilitarian design. Massive space there, which again would have accounted for the dash which is on this side. So made it very easy. And way down here is our very simple glove box, which he has already got air fresheners in because the person before us, while she may not have been called a very nice name, had a dog. And it's a little, it has a little bit of a dog smell in here. 
have very simple controls, which is very classic Toyota for our HVAC system and our radio, nothing fancy. As we move down, they have added our Bluetooth system for our phone, and it does have remote start. Here's our selector for our four wheel drive. So it is separate, it is very much old school design, not just push a button, you have to physically put it into gear. And again, here's our weird chase again, not even in four wheel drive, but they like to have you go around a little bit of a maze there, that are Tetris, not sure. The seats are cloth, and they really don't have much of a bolster because you're not going around corners very quick in this because, well, um, unless you want to end up on your side. It is a tall vehicle, and it's not meant to go drifting around corners. The door card is basically plastic, and more plastic and plastic. It does have a very large speaker down there, has speakers up here, and one thing that is really interesting is there's a speaker right there. You can't see it. It's underneath the headliner, and it actually uses the headliner to resonate throughout the rest of the vehicle. Seats are in pretty good condition. Looks like they might need a little bit of cleanup on them, a little bit of maybe just surface grime that the wizard can, of course, tackle. We haven't had this car more than a couple of days, but it's looking in really good shape. One thing that is an issue is that that massive space there, it does hold up the roof very well. Also holds the reel for that seat belt, but that does create a pretty hefty sized blind spot. And even with the head rest up like that, more blind spots. So that is one thing that we did notice driving this around yesterday. In Kansas, we have tons of wind. It was very windy, and this was definitely feeling that yesterday. As we move up, the headliner's in good shape, not sagging or anything. It's a little bit of an issue here, it looks like, where the speaker is hidden underneath, which again, he can clean up as well. One thing is since the visor is way up there, and we're seated back here, they have added side visors on the side to help compensate because there's just no way if we were to turn that visor to the side, it would never reach and cover the persons that are sitting there. One last thing, and you can see it actually on the camera. You can kind of see a weird little coloration right here. It's like a very tiny TV screen. Well, that's what it is. That is our backup camera. It is not very high resolution, but it does show a very, very rudimentary view of what is behind us. Interesting spot for it, but that is the most of an infotainment system we are getting on this vehicle. As always, with a Toyota, it's pretty basic. It's got the horn button, it's got their symbol, and that is it. Cruise controls are even way down here. Other controls are kind of back and behind on normal stocks, but nothing there on that center of that steering wheel so we can keep that focus on the road in front of us. So enough of this interior talk. Let's see what we got underneath. So in the pictures that EuroAsian Bob sent me to look at this, I, you know, I wasn't too worried about it. I was able to see the interior and exterior, but the one thing I was worried about when it showed up was rust on the frame, rust on the underside, leaks all over the place. I was kind of concerned about that. So let's see what we found. Let's dive in. Keep in mind, if this was a 180,000 mile Audi or a BMW, the entire bottom of this car would be wet with oil and coolant but this is a Toyota. Let's see what we find. Here's our core support and our condenser, radiator, everything there. Nice and dry. It's got nice metal belly pans, not plastic. Go over to this wheel here. Nice thick brakes. CV boots are in good shape. Steering rack is nice and dry, and it's got Toyota Bilsteins on it. Everything looks good there. The boots look nice here. Nothing loose. We'll go to the other side. Nice thick brake pads. Sway bar link is good. CV boots are good. Steering rack boot there is good. The strut is nice and dry. Everything looks good there. Nothing loose. There is our lower oil pan. Just did an oil change on it so it's a little glisteny, but nothing leaking or anything going on there. Look at that guys. Not a drop. 
nothing. It's just dust. It's like dirt. There is no drips of anything anywhere. Here's our front drive shaft, which we just greased. It actually has greasable U-joints. Where so many cars today have done away with that. You can see right there, greasers. They anticipate this is going to be going in the water. We greased everything going on there. Here we are at our transfer case. There is a seepage coming out of this corner. It's not even dripping. I'm not even going to mess with that. It's not worth a tear down. Very, very minor. If this was a customer's car, I would recommend the same. I would not recommend thousands of dollars of work. I would just say let's clean it and monitor. Being that this is not an all-wheel drive, it is a part-time four-wheel drive, which means you manually have to engage the transfer case with the lever that Mrs. Wizard showed you guys in the interior. This just has gear oil inside of it. No motors, nothing weird going on. It's just a very simple transfer case. Here's our drive shaft. Everything's good there. Greasable jerks. It does have a differential in the rear that can be a locking rear differential. It's electronic. You can see there's the actuator there. You push a button and it locks the rears. Everything's intact on the exhaust. Our Bilstein strut there is nice and dry. Pushings look good. Brakes are very thick. There's no CV boots back here. It's a solid rear axle. Here's our charcoal canister, and it is nice and tucked out of the way. It looks like something could have bolted here, like a plate. Maybe a spare fuel tank could fit here or something, but everything's made for off-roading for sure. Let's check this wheel. Nice thick brakes, nothing leaking. The shock is dry, nothing loose. No rust on the body. The frame only has surface rust on the welds, which is common, and on the axle and things like that, which is common for the age of this vehicle and the miles. But no serious rust, no body rust at all. Really, really nice. Let's check the date code on the tires, and then we'll get this thing on the ground. Here we are on the 38th week of 2020. They're only a couple years old. As I mentioned, I will not be doing severe off-roading. I'm not going up in the mountains or anything deep into the woods. These are almost like driving on marshmallows. The steering's all kind of like a marshmallow. And they're noisy. They're very loud. I'm going to be putting some BF Goodrich trail terrains on it. And those have a little bit of tread, but they're quiet and they're a lot more stiff. They're not made for serious, serious off-roading like these ultra terrains are. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So overall, there's a few things to fix. One thing I forgot to mention, the wiper motor, although it works, the park function is broken inside of it. So the wipers work, but they won't come back to the park position. So I need to put a new wiper motor and take care of that. But I really don't have a whole lot of major issues to take care of on this thing. And overall, I'm very, very happy with the acquisition here. EuroAsian Bob knocked it out of the park again. We did do some trading for this. If you want to see what vehicle we traded off for it, Go ahead and click the link below. It takes you to EuroAsian Bob's YouTube channel, and he has the delivery process and everything, the trade that happened. You guys want to check that out when we actually took delivery of this vehicle. Also, there's a link below to check out his website to see his inventory. Like I mentioned before, if you're into specialty cars, very hard to find cars, low mile, older cars, definitely the guy to check out. You definitely want to click on that link. Like I mentioned, I was looking at several of these, and I would come across some that have 290. 310,000 miles, it's like, and the thing is still running and driving and the people say it's nothing wrong, we're just selling it, getting something else, it's like, wow, I, you can go on Marketplace, you're not going to find an X5 with 310,000 miles, do they exist, are they out there, I'm sure some of you out there have one or two, but check Marketplace and see how many more you find, you won't. Toyotas are known for their reliability. And like I said, this time around I said, no more crazy cars. I want a Toyota. I can drive it, enjoy it, and not be working on it all the time. 
I did buy one of the most interesting looking Toyotas that they sell. I really love the styling on these. I'm sad that they stopped making them in 2014. I'm hoping in the future that they will make these again, whether it'll be EV or hybrid. I don't know what kind of weird powertrain they'll have, but I hope they make them again because they are that cool. The demand and the popularity of these is through the roof right now. I didn't want to get too new of one, 2013, 14 with low miles, 50,000 miles, 60,000 miles. Those are going for 50 grand. You can look on Bring a Trailer, Facebook Marketplace, and find some 2014 FJ Cruisers that are fairly low in miles. I don't know that they cost that much when they were new. The demand is so high that the price is also so high. One thing that's really interesting to me is that we're in a, a kind of a funk as far as car styling. We all have agreed in the comment section that Jaguars, Toyotas, all uh, Hyundais, they all look the same anymore. You really have to look at the badge on the front to see what that is because they're all almost identical. The price that people are paying for these because they're so cool and so different, it seems like that car makers would say, okay, maybe we should get back into this if there's such a high demand. and We could even charge more because people are already paying through the roof for these things. I don't know. They just keep making cookie cutter cars that look all the same. Really boring. So again, click the links below, check out EurasianBob's Bob's channel, also his website, see what kind of cars he's got for sale if you're interested. If you're curious what kind of tools we're gonna use to fix the few items I found, check out my Amazon affiliate link in the description below. We get a small cut and really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's many, many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.